What's going on, everyone? I'm Sibley Scholes, host at Access Hollywood, and I am honored and thrilled to present this incredible WonderCon panel today featuring the one and only Ghost Brothers. Please welcome Dalen Spratt, Juan Mass, and Marcus Harvey. <laughs> hey, first of all, you raised the roof and you did a street fighter. <laughs> yes, I did. You know, a sophisticated street fighter, though. Listen, it, it all works, guys. I got some more introduction to do, and then we're going to get into a Q&A. So I hope everyone is ready for a good time today. We have to get real with these gentlemen right now about their unique profession, investigating the paranormal, along with some exclusive intel about their newest series on Discovery Plus. So these ghost hunting dudes are more than just paranormal investigators. They are pioneers in the genre as the first and only African-American paranormal investigation team on TV. Bringing their unique backgrounds and diverse authenticity to the field, they offer a fresh perspective on the supernatural and with a hilarious sense of humor. These guys do things their way and they don't back down from a haunting or a good joke, which I like. Daylin, Jawan, and Marcus appear in the hit franchise Ghost Brothers that first launched back in 2016. Their personalities are on full display in two brand new Discovery Plus series. We've got Fright Club streaming right now in which the trio team up with Jack Osborne in a humor-filled competition, attempting to freak each other out with the creepiest paranormal videos they can find. And coming April 17th, also to Discovery Plus, the brothers go back into the field to investigate spooky locations across America in the new series, Ghost Brothers Lights Out. Breaking down legends and supernatural stories, the brothers shine a light on exactly who or what is haunting these locations and of course, why. I'm excited to share with you all an exclusive first look at this very new series. But first, I want to remind everyone to join in on the social conversation. That's where we can see you all. Please tag at Discovery Plus and hashtag Ghost Brothers in your posts so that we see them and we can repost. Now, without further ado, let's go. Lights out. What could cause some aggressive activity? Aggressive talk. All right, I'm aggressive. You making me mad. Ooh. You jive turkey. You're, you're doing a great job, David. We're gonna do this our way. Oh. Only time I want the, a ghost in me is the Holy Ghost. The whole town believes that this place is haunted. I'm with the town. It is haunted already. We good. Let's go. I looked over to this window. It was like a demon. Man, you know what? You're a good friend. Yeah, this ain't one of them times. Surprise! Whoa! Who said it? I don't want no ghost saying surprise. Wait, I just lost the fiend. <laughs> Wow! Yo, yo! Oh! <laughs> Time to pop the trunk on these girls! Let's go, baby. Oh, you said pop the trunk. <laughs> We're ready to go. I watched the episode. I'm not going to tell y'all. It is so good. First of all, please welcome our panelists, the Ghost Brothers. One more time, Dalen Spratt, Jawan Mass, and Marcus Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be oh, here. It is Yo. so good. Good to see your faces, gentlemen. Thank you for being here today. Listen, everyone's ready to laugh and scream with y'all. Are you ready? Oh, I so am, I am ready. Can uh, I say this? Like, can I first say, we look like some superheroes, man, in that <laughs> clip. I got to admit it, man. I was really excited about that clip. I thought you was going to roll the episode right after that. I was, like, engaged. I was ready. Yep. It Only is. on Discovery Plus. You know what it is. Exactly. Let them know. Definitely. It's exciting again to talk to you guys. I want to take us back to the beginning. Let me know who would like to start, because I need to know, how did you all meet each other? Yeah, so Dale and I jump right into it. So we all literally met in Atlanta, Georgia. So Jawan and I met at Clark Atlanta University. We pledged the same fraternity, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. But while we were doing that, Marcus was starting his entrepreneurial career, cutting hair literally around all the colleges in the AUC. And so we so we literally met, what, 2004, five, we were all, you know, together in the Atlanta area and been best friends since then. 
<laughs> where did the paranormal interest start for all of you? Did someone have that first? How did it jumpstart for you guys? It literally just stemmed from me and Juwan was roommates at the time. And I remember being up late one night, like around 3 a.m. And one of these ghost hunting shows was on television. And I just realized that I didn't see any representation of myself on any of these shows. There was no young, black, no minority, like none of that. And I just always wondered why was that? And I grew up in a church. My mom was a pastor. And, you know, she was very strict on that line that you don't cross. You know, you can mm. pray God and all of that, but anything outside of that is the devil. Yeah. So I'm always just curious, you know, why is that? And not, you know, enlisted Juwan and Marcus trying to get their opinions to see if they had any similar experiences. Yeah. Um, I, I had a, a paranormal experience when I was younger, around like 12. That was, some, that was my first introduction to paranormal. Uh, when Dalen and I were roommates, he dropped that bomb on me in the middle of the night. Like, yo, it was like, he kicked my door in. It's like 3 a.m. And he's like, yo, we're going to hunt ghosts. What, bro? <laughs> oh, get out. Get out. It is too early or Visionary. too late for that. Visionary. No, I man. Mean, um, I mean, but it's even crazier how, you know, he introduced, he tried to enlist me. I'm lining his mustache up. He's like, hey, what you think about hunting ghosts? I'm like, hey, bro, <laughs> I'll cut this whole mustache off. You keep playing. <laughs> you here looking like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How, knowing how much fun you guys have together and everyone can see that from every episode. And right now, again, this is the second time I've talked to you guys all together. It's so much fun and it just flows seamlessly. But how do you end up mixing the friendship with work? Cause it's kind of like a marriage, right? It's a relationship. You got to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we spend a little bit too much time <laughs> together. <laughs> we be ready to go on breaks. No, I'm just playing. But literally, I tell people all the time, you're literally working with your best friends. Like what other position in life would you get to have that much enjoyment? It makes you feel like you're 15 again, working at Six Flags <laughs> with your two best friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> literally, it riding all the rides, getting caught. Hardy, where you at? <laughs> oh, my bad, I'll be right back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it, no, I, I think what else, what else is dope about that though is um, we're all entrepreneurs. So we are always like one of interest on, you know, when it comes to business, but then also, you know, just life experiences. You know, we all travel. Jawan has an amazing, uh, an amazing travel group called Join Jawan. You know, he, he just does a lot of dope things. So it's like we've all been like in the mindset of just being adventurous. So I think when we do this together, it just flows because we know what the opportunity is and just you know what we're actually trying is something totally different and new and it just adds some spice to our life absolutely and juan for you too is being the traveler seeing things all of you guys kind of just saying yeah one is in we're all in does that make it so much more uh great for you to be a part of this show and just have everyone together because it is a team it looks like you guys don't disagree on much and if you do you turn it into something light the importance is is just being able to do something adventurous and fun with your friends, right? So essentially what we've kind of set up is like a job that you don't need a break from. Now, granted, there is this like paranormal element that like, yo, you sometimes got to take a step back because that can be that can get extremely heavy. But you're still there with your tribe. Like you're still there with your friends. So like even that break, you're like, yo, fellas, how we, let's go take a breather together. You know what I mean? So yeah. just being able to explore and, and see the unknown with uh, your best friends is truly um, something that is like fortunate and, and a blessing. Um, I know that obviously you guys work so hard on this to help further everyone's understanding of paranormal uh, activity and the phenomena that comes with it. But um, I'll say for sure what you had just mentioned, Dalen, representation. You didn't see yourself, someone that looked like you on a show like this. And to be able to do that and be the first and only African-American paranormal investigators on TV. When you hear that, what does that mean to you? I mean, like we say all the time, man, we're like the Jackie Robinsons of the paranormal. I mean, well, technically we kind of did make that up, but it would be kind of cool to be recognized as someone like that. You know what I mean? He was the first to do something in his genre and we always admired him and our growth. And it would be kind of cool, you know, maybe in a hundred years, some kids looking up and being like, man, them the Ghost Brothers. Yeah, I think the only, the only bad thing about that statement is the only part. Right. You know what I'm saying? We like to, we were glad they were the first, but we still should not be the only. Right. Um, I think that we've kind of shown that different demographics, different races are inter interested in the paranormal, you know, right. and um, 
I think that they're as we continue to go in and, and we do it like with our own like flavor, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's relatable. It's like you, you could be who you are with this type of situation. So I'm looking forward to more, not just necessarily us being the only, I would like to see some other flavors, you know what I'm saying out there. So we're looking forward to that happening. Definitely the first, not the last. And I'm sure there's a lot of fans who reach out to you guys about this. Um, and I know you have mentioned just about the topic of, of being the first and only right now uh, Black uh, host on, in the paranormal realm. But you mentioned that the topic of paranormal can also be a bit taboo to discuss in Black culture, and you want to help to advance those discussions, break down those barriers. What's the best feedback that you've heard so far from fans who watch the show? So one of the things that we strive to do from the beginning was just be like, just getting, just generating the conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. So like we're interested, we, we're in this space and now we know that we're just temp it, this space can be temporary. And so it's like, how do we advance the dialogue? How do we advance the conversation? And a lot of it has been us meeting people and doing meet and greets and having talks and discussions. And I remember we were in Illinois and we actually did a live investigation and a talk. Um, but we had like, I want to say it was probably the largest black turnout we had had ever in one of those instances. Uh, one of those investigations, it was like really dope. And they were like, we never knew you guys existed, but now that we know we're forever going to support because it's like, we have, it's almost like you guys are one of us. Like we never knew who we could look up to or know who we could like lean on because we felt like we were the only ones going through some of this, like, I guess you could say quote unquote craziness, but it's not necessarily crazy. Like, but just the, the experience in the unknown. And that was the taboo aspect of the conversation. And so some of those uh, other blacks in the field that came out, they were extremely supportive. Uh, they've become like friends on social media and they followed us around like the conferences and other live events. So they've been like, almost like extended family now. So it's like almost like we don't do it for ourselves as much as like we do it for others. You know, we do it for the culture. We're trying to. Yeah. Do you feel, do you get uh, fans randomly reaching out to you just about that? I know you said in that speaking of engagement, you saw the fans there, but do people personally just reach out and say, thank you. And I love seeing what you guys are doing. Oh, absolutely. All the time, all the time. And I think for me personally, we get, I get it, whether it's uh, via social media, like Instagram, direct messages, under comments, but I'm pretty sure Dalen and Marcus experienced the same thing. Uh, I get it in Marcus's barbershop all the time. Like when I'm in Marcus's barbershop getting cut, somebody's gonna walk in and be like, oh, bro, you know Marcus? Okay, first off, we I'm in his shop, but yeah, I know Marcus. <laughs> and he's like, you were on that show? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we started talking about the show. Like everybody's like so open and supportive. So I wanna talk about the new series, uh, Ghost Brothers Lights Out. You guys Lights are back. Out. <laughs> Lights out. You're back in the field investigating, but the roles are a little bit different this time. So for starters, in each episode, Dalen sends Marcus and Juwan in first to investigate. And the two of you have no prior knowledge of the haunting at all. And he is to guide you where you need to go. Um, definitely drew the tall straw there <laughs> for him. What else can fans expect to see? Um, just knowing that's the setup of that show. I think what, uh, what makes this concept really, really dope is because they don't know what they're getting themselves into. They don't know any background story. They don't know any history. They've never been to this building or this city before. So when they go into these places, they're getting raw investigation and raw feedback. So if they get anything in that opening sequence that matches a story that relates to what I know about the place, like it lets me know that there really is something else out there. It's just like that next level of like confluence or confirmation. So I think from a technical standpoint, this show just adds, like I said, another level of uh, just proving what's out there. Does it, uh, <laughs> does anyone get nervous going into these that you're not gonna, you're gonna see something that you've yet to see or do you guys still have nerves like that? Uh, go ahead, Marcus. Marcus, you ready? <laughs> I, get nervous, I, I, get, I get nervous just because of Dalen's judgment, period. So <laughs> I'm, I'm I mean, nervous. You, I you, am you, nervous you, every time we pull up to a location. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's the, the, the nerve factor is like when you see the location, most places you'd be like, yo, why am I even here? And some places like they look, they look possessed. Like you'll look at a building and be like that, that doesn't even need to have our attention at all. Yeah. I, I definitely, I definitely am always nervous because 
every time we've been somewhere, it's been haunted. So, That's you true. know, it's That's like, true. it'd be different if like we caught up on a couple ones. It's like, oh, okay. Ain't nobody in here. Good job, Dalen. <laughs> but now it's like, there's something in everyone, bro. Let me ask you this, Marcus. Do you feel Shut like- up. I don't want you to ask me nothing. Okay, go ahead. You can ask. I don't want, I want no, no question. <laughs> do you not feel like every place is haunted, though? I can't in the world housing like that though right <laughs> listen you know what's funny now that you said that no i think that you could be bad in a thousand i i, I give you that i give you props black man i give you props black king you know what i'm saying uh but also i do also agree that pretty much every place that we are at is haunted in some sense some fit sense you know pettiness don't just die mm. no it pettiness lingers don't die. It, it lingers, just lingers. every it, ghost it, is it, petty. it stays forever did you say, what, Juwan, you say every ghost is petty? That's it. <laughs> every ghost. That's it. You know how, you know how petty you have to be to be a ghost? Like, you don't even want to go to the other world. You just, you don't want to go ahead. You know, you just like, nah, y'all going to hear about why I'm still here. Because that's what a ghost <laughs> is. A ghost is always yep. somebody who's just trying to let y'all know I'm still here. They got to get the last word. They I was going to say. Because yeah, it it's definitely the last word. Last yeah, word. that's funny. And like, and one more thing. Light on and, and off. <laughs> and one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dalen, do you ever? Is there ever a moment? Because when I was watching the episode, which we're going to show a little clip of something uh, for the fans, do you ever, 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 ever have a moment where you want to throw them off or kind of mess with them for a little bit, but you may know something that's in the next room? Yeah, you know what. A lot of times it crosses my mind, but then I have to realize like the seriousness of the situation that right. we're in. Like I know the real history. Like I yeah. know somebody was murdered, got their head cut yeah. off, smashed up in this room. And yes, I want to play a joke on them, but dude might really be in there with them. <laughs> so <laughs> let me just chill. And I like that you explain that as well for people who don't understand paranormal and even me watching. It's like, OK, this there is history behind this. There is a reason we're in here and there and those ghosts that are in there or could be are lingering for a reason. They want you to know the truth. Exactly. Mm, so exactly. I definitely appreciate that history lesson as well. Um, so there is a unique way that you all have of drawing out the spirits in your investigations. It's kind of like you challenge the ghosts a little bit. Um, we've got an exclusive clip to share from the new series during your investigation of the Eloise Asylum in Michigan. Let's take a look. Can you move for us? That looks like the shoulder. The shoulder is moving the shoulder. And it's looking at it. Ooh, break out the spirit box, see if you can get a name. I'm already on it. Can you tell us your name? My name is Marcus. This is Juwan. Could you touch Juwan's hand? Ooh. Can you can you hold his hand? Can you give me can you give me a high five? You know. I don't think a kid from 1839 would know what a high five is, Jawan. Put your foot out, bro. Can you tie his shoe? He just Ooh. touched your shoe. Good job, fellas. Thank you. Wow. It's still on your foot now. So you did want to play. Kill him with the shoulders. Oh, 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 oh. Get on the good foot. Uh, get on the good foot. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's challenging you, brother. Oh. Ooh. Oh. The kid just wanted to play, man. Have fun. Ooh. Oh, he must just like your kicks, man. Boom. This is insane. This being the children's floor. This is exactly where a child spirit would have been. Cool. All right. Listen. All right with the Rob Wild lines. Listen, <laughs> what'd you say, Marcus? <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. The wild lines. When when you all see that back, obviously <laughs> being there and knowing it firsthand, but when you see that back watching yourselves, what, what goes through your mind? First of all, uh, that we ain't got no sense. Because <laughs> yeah. you all sat there and did the kid play with a kid ghost. <laughs> Extreme, extremely childish, honestly. But uh, I felt like we did some really good investigating, though. Yeah. I felt like that was yeah. quality investigating. A one, like to get you're you're, to get, uh, you're on the kids' floor in this asylum, yeah. and then you get in contact with a kid, but not just from like an auditory standpoint through the obelisk. You also get this visual through the SLS camera. 
So, like, that's paranormal activity 101 right there, guys. Great work. Auditorial guy. Who is, who is this man? What's this man? <laughs> who is this man? <laughs> when people say you, you get the chills or the hair is raising on your arms, are you feeling any of that? Or because you've done this so many times, it's kind of like just it's just second nature to you. I'm not going to lie. I think I think my barometer shifts like so as we go on more and more investigations, I think like we start to get used to it. But you will still feel these same emotions like you'll still feel the chills. You'll still get the hairs on your, your arm will stand up, but maybe not the same thing will produce those type of reactions so like um you just you i just usually take it as like yo i this the, the presence of something is here if i'm starting to get ch chills or the hair on my arms stand up that's how i know it's real right yeah because we tell people all the time like spirits were people too so the same emotions right. that they had in life i would assume you would carry that over into the afterlife so if you was a jokester a prankster jovial you, you know love to have fun you probably gonna be that same type of spirit so in that case, that's a child that passed away. Right. You probably want someone to show them some attention, play around with them, you know, and that's what you see how active that child got when Jawan just decided to dance with the child. And yeah, and I think it's stuff like that. People get it misconstrued with, with paranormal investigating and think everything is dark and aggressive and trying to rile up spirits. Nah, just go in there and treat people the same way you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fun that you guys have together, obviously, always taking it to the next level, especially with this new show. Um, with that being said, though, the fun that you have, the history that you bring to everyone out there, how for you has paranormal investigating evolved personally for each of you? Yeah, I just feel like for me personally, um, I started off with no idea what was you know, if there was even an afterlife, I, you know, growing up in the church, I believe in heaven and hell. But, you know, you, what happens when you die? Like, is there a purgatory state? Do you go directly to where you're going? Like, I didn't know any of that. But after doing this for the past, you know, five, six, seven years, I've realized that there is something after this. For fact, I know that. What that is, I don't know. But it just it's comforting to know that once you pass away from this physical body, that this isn't it. Right. But you know, know they say they do say whatever you're wearing when you pass away, that's your forever outfit. So Ooh, so I gotta Ooh. stay fresh. That's Ooh. why we gotta stay fresh. Always stay fresh. Always that's stay true. Fresh. Yes, that's true. That's yes, in the Bible. That's true. That's, that's in the Bible. That's, what book is it, Dalen? Bro, that's, that's in, in Marcus chapter uh that's Marcus. Seven and that's Marcus. Marcus chapter <laughs> seven and twelve. Seven and twelve. It is seven and twelve. Seven <laughs> and twelve. That's the name of the uh, chapter. <laughs> seven and twelve. <laughs> It's he, not, who trans it's not seven, he who transitions seven, remains seven. remains in his flyness. That's what it says. He who transitions <laughs> remains in his flyness. That's yes. where the term fresh to death comes from. Oh yeah. man, perfect. There you go. That's too much. That's too much. You it give it too much, bro. You start it in, in the, the church. Greek. That's the Greek translation. I'm about to pass the offering plate around. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else has kids, but Marcus, I know it's yeah. Greek. Yeah, as a father, the evolution of this and as a husband, how has it been for you? So when we first started Ghost Brothers, it was just I was just a married man. You know, I, I wasn't necessarily um, we didn't have any I didn't have any kids. And um, now, as you know, you know, I've had two of them, you know, beautiful kids. Uh, like now we go to places where we're like, you know, investigating kids. It kind of hits a little harder. You know, and it also made me when we had my, when I had my kids made me feel a lot more um, mortal. So it just makes it seem like it gives you a different empathy with whomever you're kind of investigating because you're like this person had the same emotions that I have. You kind of as the more life that you start living, the more like visible death is. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like it's kind of like watching your it's like watching like, dang, like this is deep. Because you can get really involved in these stories. And, you know, with this activity that we actually experience often, it's like, dang, man, like, I wonder why this keeps, you know, this person here, why they're, they're here. So it's just I think the questions that I'm asking now that I've lived a lot more life has, you know, really helped us in the evolution of my in our, in our investigations. You know, we're a lot more comfortable with ourselves as men, period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're more confident as individuals, you know. We know what we want from life. And so when we when we know what we want for life, we just look at how these people are responding in death a little bit more in depth. Mm. 
Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, yeah, it makes you look at the shows even differently now, just from your perspective, what you're saying about it. Um, I'm glad that you guys have each other and I'm glad that you have this platform so everyone can also grow and evolve with you um, as we watch. So one of the most watched clips of Ghost Brothers on YouTube um, is your investigation at the Magnolia Plantation. Um, why do you think and what do you think made that episode stand out so much? Uh, yeah, I mean, on the ground level of it is, you know, it's black folks going to a plantation, you know what I mean? So that's already like buzzworthy and people are already curious, what are they going to run into? And I think people anticipated maybe uh, us having experience with maybe the white owners of the plantation, but we had a more connecting spirits with the spirits of the African slaves that were on the plantation. And it wasn't the rumors of these spirits being reckless and mean, we had a totally different experience. It felt welcoming. It felt like a sense of, of pride. It felt like a, a, it felt like your ancestors giving you a big hug. And yeah, I, that's why I feel like that one episode, you can feel it, see it, smell it, and taste it just from watching it. It felt like at one point we was walking by and you could hear them saying like, I see y'all with the white folks filming y'all. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. <laughs> Jawan, do you feel the same? Like, how does it That's feel? That's so good? stupid. That's I funny. can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess from an ancestral standpoint, we're their wildest dreams. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, <See>? like, <laughs> um, I think Daylon really hit it right on the head as far as, like, uh, it being received as one of the top episodes just to just with um, uh, I guess you have like this racial undertow, but you also have like a great spiritual paranormal story that's being told as well. Um, and then even from us, from a personal standpoint, I think we took a lot away from that. I think we learned a lot uh, from that episode. Um, so it actually twofold for us. Like, you know, the fans love it and, and we loved it. Uh, that was know, our first time. That was our first time on a on a plantation for all of us, right? All of mm-hmm. us, yeah. yeah. So sure. I mean, just just in that, you know, right? That was just, you know, like like he said, even thinking about the week in which we were doing it, you know, it was really hot. You know, what I'm saying um, we were in the middle of the summer, and it was just like I remember us walking on there and like, dang, could you imagine having to like, you know, what they went through? Mm-hmm. And it just was like you just were, we were always walking respectfully. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's what I felt like. And I think that that's probably why you can really feel the connection to, you know, that clip is because everybody can feel the respect level that we established. And that was pretty much the, the, the episode that I think really sums up what Ghost Brothers is the most. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we we, you know, we representing a lot when we come through, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Definitely. And, and knowing the history, I'm sure each of you had your own moment after you filmed that episode to kind of take a look back at yourself, the history there that you were standing on those grounds and doing that in present day. Did you have a moment where you kind of just took a step back and a pinch me moment? Like, I can't believe this is actually happening. We're doing this. And it's, it is groundbreaking to bring that to light, to show people what's going on and have you guys at the forefront of that. Yeah. I think there was a, there's one time we were on, um, me and Daylon were uh, walking on the plantation. I think Jawan was in the um, overseer's quarters, but me and Daylon were walking over to the gin mill and we stopped for a second and we both looked up and I was like, dang, bro, you realize that our ancestors were looking at the same stars that we're looking at right now, you know, and we're here for two different circumstances and just imagine like how they, how they feel about us. And that, it was just, I think that that was like the time where I can really say, wow, this is like really happening, you know, because we were, you know, we were on Destination America at the time. We were, you know, we were learning of like, yo, this, it, we are actually the first African-American paranormal investigation team out here and doing it on television. That's kind of crazy. So, you know, all those things kind of started like really weighing. So. Oh, definitely. Um, I hope everyone gets a chance to see that episode. Um, I will continue clicking it because I would like to watch it again and again. I feel like each time you watch the episodes that you guys do, you learn something more right. um, every after each one. 
So knowing that you've been to all of these haunted locations, right? You visited so many. Do you have a personal favorite or is there one story from one that really stood out to each of you? Mm. Yeah, I know for me personally, uh, I always say Monticello, Arkansas. There was this place called the Allen House. And I think that one stood out the most because that was our first time uh, going to someone's home that was haunted. Like mm. the, we were going to plantations, we were going to old steamboats, we were going to sawmills, but we had never been to someone's house where a family was actively living in a haunted house. And that episode and that investigation just really threw me because they had something called doppelgangers. And that's when you see like the negative version of yourself. So the husband would go into a room and see his wife there and he would go to talk to her and his real wife would then walk up behind him from another room. And yeah, it's, it's that type of mind. Wait, no, I'm like, now I have the chills when you just said <laughs> <Right? laughs> <Doppelganger. laughs> Doppelganger. That's what uh, us is that's what us is about. If you, yes. know, you know, us, that's doppelganger. Yes, Jordan yeah. Peele, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the doppelgangers. So that that is how scary was that? And would you ever want to go back to that again and, and do and see that? What was creepy about it was this man had his whole family there. So he had a little baby who's maybe, you know, under one. And then he had one child that was maybe like seven. But then he had a 12 year old that was in college. So they just had like a whole interesting dynamic. And everyone was so beyond smart in that house. So it's like they weren't even afraid of the spirits. They were looking at it from like a scientific standpoint. Right. So it was just really interesting, the type of people that deal with these situations. Um, Juwan, is there one place you'd never want to return to again? Uh, I would probably never want to go back to the House of Wills in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I think we unanimously can say that place is uh, the, the devil's playground. Um, it, is, uh, it, is, it is owned and operated by the leader of the satanic movement in Cleveland. So, uh, and then it was originally constructed as a messianic temple to harness energies. And then between then and its owner now, it was the largest funeral home uh, in Cleveland. And so when you start to think about everything that that building, can, that building is actually holding, all the emotions that that building is actually holding, uh, it, became, it becomes like a very like traumatic place. Um, and that experience was really tough because it actually separated us as a group. The investigation Marcus didn't want to be a part of due to just, uh, just belief systems. And so we, we started with just two out of the three and, um, eventually Marcus joined us, but you know, it took a different toll on us, uh, from an investigative standpoint, cause that wasn't something we've ever experienced before. So, uh, it was one of the, the, the most demonic places we've ever been. And I don't really have a desire to go back. Marcus, is there one spot, a uh, location where you'd say absolutely not, never again? There's a lot of spots, but I will tell you the spot All that I actually, <laughs> yeah, most of them <laughs> that we've yeah. been to. But I will say this though. One of, my, one of the spots that I actually did like the most was in Jamaica. I, I loved it, not only because it was in Jamaica, of course, mm. First and but, first. Um, just the you kind of get the same feeling from like mm. the magnolia plantation that you get at at rose hall because it's the same pretty much the same story yeah you know um and so it was just amazing to be like dang these these men were you know held captive and looking at beauty like right over here you know what i'm saying looking mm -hmm. at the ocean you know could you know like it was just crazy you know just to think of how it was going over there but then the other dope part about it was just that crew that we had on that on that occasion was just so dope. And we we actually all kind of connected on like a, a day off and we went to go to uh, Bob Marley's crib. It was just dope. It was just a dope little situation. So that's what I like about Ghostbusters, too, because we we're able yeah. to kind of like let our crew be a part of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not just the ghost. It's not just me, Dalen and Jawan right. making the show happen. It's like the crew behind us, the guys who are like, they're just as afraid as we are. You know, but but then they got a camera on them, and they like they can't even look back. You like <laughs> look behind you, and they like I can't, man. I got the camera on. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's just cool, man. So that's that's probably one of the most memorable spaces that I've ever been to. Let's not forget. Let's not forget, bro. We broke out and did the electric slide in that episode. <laughs> oh yes, no, we, we are the yeah. first paranormal investigative team to perform the electric slide and the kid and play on national. And television. the kid and yes. play. Yeah. Drop yeah. the mic. 
Drop the mic. Drop the what else can we contribute to the culture <laughs> after that? What, what, what does what the culture need from us? What, what, what else do you guys want from us? <laughs> you guys got it covered. And I like that you mentioned the cameramen, the team with you guys behind you um, filming everything because that has got to be difficult. Like you said, you can't look around. You have to keep on you at all times. So yeah. shout out to them. Shout out to the camera crews. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, those guys really uh, – they really, you know, they make us look good every season. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie, every season everybody's worked really hard, you know. Um sound, sound too, sound, though, because like they be too. having to sit, they have to sit in like the most probably 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 the most haunted places in all of the locations by themselves yeah. just to keep quiet, like yep. just for the shot. And then they and then they can hear everything. So they're in yes. their ears, stuff that we're not hearing, they're hearing, and they just sitting in the corner like <laughs> Sorry, they hear, I will kill you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ruto! Ruto! <laughs> Ruto! <laughs> nope, nope, nope. That would give me nightmares. Don't think I could do that. Um, yes. I, I want to go back, uh, Dalen. I know you had mentioned, and I wanted to bring up religious upbringings. You said your mom is a pastor. Yep. First of all, I know we didn't get to touch on it all the way, so I just want to know, family reaction at first when you brought this to them? What was that immediate reaction? And also I would like to know everyone's kind of thoughts on afterlife or if there is, or what you're thinking now and has it changed from when you started until today? Oh, so. they Gucci and gold now. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So uh, I know for me personally, uh, like I said, my mother's the pastor. She's been my spiritual advisor forever. And like Jawan mentioned earlier, she, my mother's always been a supportive mother. Like I, if I told her I wanted to be a astronaut, she would have went outside and tried to build me a spaceship. Like she's that type of mother. So she was supportive about Ghost Brothers because it's something that we came up with and something that we were doing. But right. me and her did have a real conversation one day. And like Jawan said, I was telling her, I feel like people really love watching us because we really don't know what we're doing. We're figuring it out along the way and people are able to get on that journey with us. And she looked at me and she was just like, you're right, because if you truly knew what you were doing, you wouldn't be doing it. And she just walked off like she dropped the mic <laughs> and walked yeah. off. And, and I was just standing there like and it was one of those times. It felt like your mother looked at you after whooping you all those years and that one day she just tells you, I'm disappointed in you. You know what I mean? Like that, that type of pain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you have that support system and yeah. she's like, go for it and do it. Um, as far as religious wise or beliefs, Marcus um, and Juan, do you has, have things changed for you? Did you believe in this all the way? Like, what are the thoughts for you guys that you went into this and how you feel now? Um, so I've, I've always kind of believed in, uh, spirits. Uh, I grew up religious as well. Uh, like I always kind of acknowledged, like, you know, the father, the son and the Holy spirit. That mm -hmm. was a thing. Uh, I didn't know like what happened after death. Uh, and I don't know. I still don't know. However, I can say that there is something after death. And I think this journey that I'm on is kind of like my way of just seeing what it is, just exploring what that could potentially look like. Uh, and, and it's actually been a very fulfilling one. I can say that, like, I just really enjoy, like, just the knowledge that you pick up along the way. And, and it's never, you know, you, I guess we don't know if we're right or wrong until obviously we've, we've, we've transitioned, but like the, the, the journey of like understanding other people's belief systems and what that looks like is really the, the, the awesome aspect. Marcus, for you, um, are you religious before were you religious before this? Did you believe in afterlife? What were your thoughts on everything before starting the show and where you're at now? Uh, actually, so actually before we started the show, um, I was still active in my church. I was an armor bearer, which is like the pastor's assistant. So I've been my past, I was my pastor's assistant for like 13 years. Uh, so my wife is a pra praise and worship leader. She sings with like, you know, uh, Art, you know, recording artists all over the world. So, you know, we very, very religious um, home. Um, and so, you know, like that's why, you know, as uh, Jawan mentioned, one of the episodes, my rule was always I didn't want to go into any situation that was demonic. I could try some paranormal stuff, but yeah. demonic things I was not a fan of and was not, you know, signing up for. Um, but since we've been doing it, not but, and, and since we've been doing it, it's just, 
added to my thought process when it comes to religion. You know, I just thought there's just, you know, this or that. Now it's like it's this or that and everything in between. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And now it's just like making you just be, you know, a lot more conscious of what you do on, on, on earth so that you can make sure that you, I don't know, just get to whatever you want to get to in the next life. If there's a next life. Like I said, I don't know. We don't know. We Like, only way that we can know is, like you said, if we check out. And if we check back in, you can be like, man, you was asleep for a minute. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, right. there's no way to confirm it. But I just know that what we try to do is try to find out what it is. Now we have to give the fans something that we haven't okay. seen on the show before. Uh-huh. What would people be surprised? Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. We're not going there. My bad. We talk about something else. I mean, right. listen, listen. That's next season. What? That's the other show. That's the other show. What would yeah. people be surprised to know about you? What's like something? Is there a hidden talent? Is there something we don't know? Yeah, I think for me, uh, as funny and jovial as we come off on TV, uh, I'm really heavy into finance and day trading. So I feel like that's like two totally different things. Like you'll meet the funny day when they think that's the one that you're going to always be around. But like, no, I'm really serious about like my day trading and my charts and like putting the like sitting at the computer. So, yeah, I think that's a cool little thing about me. Well, we'll have a convo off camera because I need some help with my. I got you. I got you. You think yeah. I'm at the stock market at four in the morning. I'm on my phone, too. Right. Uh, I am. I am. Uh, Marcus, what about you? Um, something different about me. I, I don't know. I don't, I guess it's just since people do know me for paranormal on this platform, you know, that I'm a barber, I'm an art gallery owner, uh, father, husband, all those dope things, you know, uh, a sideline reporter now, you know, yeah, the, congratulations. I saw that. I was like, you were on yeah. a panel the other day and I saw you. Yeah. yeah. I dug on all of you guys. Okay. Just okay. Know. Look at um. you. Look at you doing your. <laughs> Look at you but, digging you know, us like a shovel. What'd you find I out? I know. I know. Hey. Making me feel like, okay. But I yeah, won't just, share everything I know, but yes. <laughs> Marcus, but it's wild tell, out us there. About that. tell us. Yeah, but you know, I'm just a spicy dude, man. Like, I'm, I'm pretty much, I guess you could describe me as like your favorite cousin mm-hmm. at the family reunion. Like, you be, you'll be pissed if I'm not at the family reunion. I love yeah. that. Joel, what about you? What about you? What's something that we we don't know that we would be surprised to know? Mm. Uh, I would say, I think that it would be that I'm not really shy. I think the camera gives, I think I come off shy in front of camera, but like uh, amongst my people, I'm probably, I'm not that at all. I'm not that at all. Like I'm pretty outgoing life of the party very personable sociable like i'm really here for the human connection another show i want to get into really quickly for everyone and i this is where i met you fellas already fright club uh with jack osborne obviously another show where you get to have a little bit more fun right um there's poltergeist shadow figures bigfoot and and just so we're specific you had bigfoot's toenail Um, oh yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah I asked, I asked y'all about that one. What's, what's the craziest piece of supernatural footage you found during that show? Do you each have one that really stood out to you? Yeah, I know for me, yeah. it would definitely be uh, Shy Unique, our friend Shy who, Unique. who had, he had a, a, a ghost horse giraffe. Giraffe. <laughs> a, a giraffe, he had a giraffe, it's a giraffe. In, in his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta watch it. You got it's coming soon. Oh, what? But, <laughs> sooner or later, Listen, this episode just, dropped. Just remember two see. things. Just remember two things. Shy unique and harass. That's all you have to remember. Shy unique harass. and harass. Hey man, I wish God would have I wish God would have let me name the animals, man. It would have been a whole different. <laughs> It would have been a whole different. What world. kind of Adam would you have been? Bro. <laughs> That's a rap monkey. That's, That's a rap monkey. A rock monkey. That's a rock monkey. That's a rock That's a Renanum. That's a Renanus monkey. Kind of. They don't make them earls. A whole bunch of earls. No oh, turtle. Remember earl. Earl. Uh, <laughs> it's a turtle. It's a turtle named Earl. A oh, flock of earls. A whole bunch of earls. Was there, is there one that stood out to you, Juwan? The, the uh, craziest piece of footage. Yeah, so it's been a couple, but they've been like the UFO, Ebony type things. Uh, 
from our friend Yasmin. Like they were all like unidentified flying objects that we're like, I'm, you, you're blown away because you really can't, you have no idea what they are. You'd be like, is that a bug? Is it a bird? But you obviously can tell it's something, it's not anything natural. Right. Like you'd be like, that is just real. And it's like flying with like certain like intelligence. And you're like, this is extremely mind blowing. So yeah, I would say like the UFO type footage. Wow, Marcus? Mine would have to be Baby Ric Flair. Um, mm. <laughs> just wait till the episode. You'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Baby Ric Flair. <laughs> baby Ric Flair. That's funny. Boy. <laughs> nature, um, baby boy. Nature. <laughs> nature. <laughs> nature, Ooh. baby boy. I have to steal something from y'all right now from Fright Club. We're going to do our own little frightening round, if you don't mind. It'll be fun. Okay. It's quick fire. You answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay? All I, wish, right. I wish we had buzzers, but here we go. All right. Who is the first one to run away or scream? Juwan. Hey. Which one, <laughs> which one of you is most likely to be a ghost that sticks around to haunt in the afterlife? Daylight. Marcus or Daylight. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a ghost, where or who would you haunt? Mm. Oh, if I went before Tina, my house, I will hunt. I will hunt. If, if she got remarried, I will hunt. I'll do. Oh, yes. Ain't nothing going on in the house you paid for. Go, I will yeah, ain't nothing man, going on. Put her leg down. Put her <laughs> leg down. Oh, 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 you just agile now, huh? Oh, you oh, work out. Oh, when did, this come, when did you come about this? <laughs> oh, you different now. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> who, are, who or what or where would you guys haunt uh, Joanna Daly? <laughs> uh, I'm going with Miss Pew because she told me in high school that I wasn't going to be able to do know what I wanted to do. I was calling my mama, putting me in detention, getting me suspended the other day. So Miss Pew, that's who house I'm going to be hunting at if I go. And I hope Miss Pew got that's a Discovery Plus, Discovery so, she Plus. Yeah. Our, so she can see all of our episodes. Guess who getting paid to talk now, Miss Pew? <laughs> <laughs> you always knew it. You always knew. You always knew. You I knew what I was gonna be, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is funny. That's dumb. That's dumb. So stupid. That is dumb. Both, uh, both those are very dumb. That. Juwan, do you have one? Mine would have to be, uh, honestly, probably a soul food restaurant. I want, like, I'm going back to the roots. I need something like a Gladys Knights. <laughs> so how you going? So you gonna hunt a haunted place that doesn't even exist no more? Yeah, that's, no, it that's, that's, that's commitment. <laughs> You're hunting a haunted hunting. No, it's but I am you, on the search for it. it I am yeah. on the search for it. Oh, you, you might have going on. You might have figured it out. You might have figured it out, Jawan. That might be why ghosts are still around. They might be looking for that old Gladys Knight, which is an apartment building now. Now, yeah. with a ghost, it ain't, ain't got nothing to do with him. He, he looking you, for the chicken and waffle. He looking you, for the you and over waffle. It, and now you over in the doggone guest services spot. Because <laughs> you, you, you. you thought you were sitting down. You at the leasing office. <laughs> you over at, you at Rashad's desk. You at Rashad's desk. I'm trying to place orders at the concierge. And he like, no, nah, we out of we out of biscuits. I'm, well, no, ain't no more smothered and covered. Last one in that round is name a person living or dead that you would want to take on a ghost hunt and why. Oh, Rihanna, that's so hard. That's, Rihanna, <laughs> I, I, I think I, I, I accidentally said Rihanna. <laughs> accidentally? Accidentally. I said it. But if she ever want to go hunt some ghosts. Okay, Rihanna, Rihanna will be listening to this. We gotta get this to her. Now, why, why do you want to take her is the next question. Because I just felt like, you know, that's uh, that's probably a date that she had. Let me, let me, let me, let me date. Date. I ain't got nothing doing nothing. I'm just <laughs> doing nothing. Let me be quiet. Juwan, who you got? Did we? You were going. <laughs> you, shooters gonna shoot. Shooters hey, gonna from, shoot. From, hey, from, <laughs> from, from the logo. I feel like if I do it on Zoom, it's it's 35 footer. I'm pulling. Hey, 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 that's the logo. I'm hey. in. Let's I'm go. Impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> that, that was from the logo. Doc. That was from the logo. That was one step hey, from half. And it went in. I'm impressed. <laughs> They're like, I'm in. Okay, sold. Oh, I'm going. One. I'm going. We okay. 
You won the series. You won the series. We you it. won the series. Wow. We won the series. It. That was a one and done. That was day time. I, day time. Over. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here. Um, <laughs> Marcus, Marcus, your turn. Give it to me. Give it to me. It had to be a comedian. Ooh. Okay. Let's bring Kevin Hart. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Wow. Okay. That's a good one. Let's see what happens. Wow. That, actually, that all needs to happen. Rihanna, Kevin, I'll be up in there. Let's go. Let's just make it's, this that happen. Sound like, that sounds like Ghost Brothers celebrity. This is it. Is it is, I, I really could talk to you guys all day long. Okay. You know this. This is no, <laughs> yeah. this has like, been so much fun. I don't even know how long we've been going, but um, we do have to wrap it up shortly. But is there anything before I start closing it out that you guys want to say to the fans that are watching, to everyone who's been supportive, to the new fans that are coming in? Yeah, I do. I just want to say thank you to everybody because it's not because of us. It's only because of y'all that we get to come back every year and keep it every year the unknown uh, in front of y'all. So thank y'all for watching, supporting and all the messages. We try to respond back to everybody and we appreciate y'all from the bottom of our heart. Yes, I echo that sentiment 100 percent. Like, I think we are extremely grateful for um, our supporters. Uh, I think we know we wouldn't be at a place that we are without them. Moving along, I think we got to tell everybody about Fright Club and we got to tell everybody about Ghost Brothers Lights Out. I think it's dope to have two shows and them being complete opposites. It's it's kind of like from a sports analogy, man, like it's almost like we're an analyst and we're a player. So yeah. the, the Fright Club, we're analyzing the clip and the, the investigative show with Lights Out, we in the field putting up shots. So um, we really appreciate all the support and we hope you guys really check it out. Absolutely. Marcus, do you want to chime in too? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, like we said before, man, our, our brand has always been grateful. You know what I'm saying? We're grateful for the fans. We are also grateful for the people who are, you know, behind the scenes, you know, who keep giving us these opportunities to be out in front, you know, to like literally allow our imaginations to like, you know, really push the envelope forward. And, uh, I mean, this has been one of the dopest experiences of my life. I'm excited about it continuously, you know, going. I think that we're pretty much going to be one of those groups that's going to be like doing um, PBS specials, you know, when we 50, you know, saying all of our greatest hits. What all happened? Ghost Brothers, Brothers greatest hits. Bro. <laughs> People all over the world. Johnny. Hopefully. You know I'm back, baby. I'm, I'm back. Hey, the, Bob, the Bobby Brown of Paranormal <laughs> is back. Everybody <laughs> told you. It's just, Oh, it's, it's all tough. So I'm is it going to be a Black History Month special? Is it going to be a Black History it Month gotta special? Be. And it got to be. Okay. It got to be. Y'all, like I said, I can talk to you guys forever. I hope I still continue to talk to all y'all. And I will definitely be tuned into everything that you guys are doing on Discovery Plus and moving forward. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you guys again for sharing your incredible insight and experiences as trailblazers in the paranormal community. You are really doing so much, so much good. We got a lot to look forward to with your show streaming on Discovery Plus. Keep exploring, investigating, and laughing, everyone. And if you have haven't already remember to sign up for discovery plus so you can stream ghost brothers lights out beginning april 17th as well as fright club available right now you can also catch up on all things ghost brothers as the entire library content of their hit series is all available to stream on the platform so you have no excuse you can follow at discovery plus on facebook twitter and instagram for all the latest news and announcements i'm sibley skulls thank you guys so much for joining <laughs>